It's fair to say that, by the time she died in 1775, Caroline Matilda was tired of men. Not only was she the sister to the mad King George III, but she was also the wife of Christian VII, one of the worst monarchs in the history of Danish royalty. Her marriage to the mentally unfit Dane might have produced a healthy daughter, but it was by every other measure, a tragedy. And it was Caroline Matilda herself who was the real victim in the whole affair. Caroline Matilda was born on July 22, 1751, as the ninth and youngest child of Frederick Louis, Prince of Wales, and Princess Augusta of Saxe-Gotha. Her father Frederick had passed away three months before Caroline's birth, leaving his wife Princess Augusta a widow with nine children. The family had long been estranged from Frederick's father, King George II of England, but death led to a cooling of tensions. Although George didn't like Augusta, and didn't like her reluctance to take part in court activities, she was generally left to raise her children as she saw fit. For Caroline this meant a more secluded life than her father might have encouraged. Her mother, Princess Augusta hated what she felt was corruption of the English court under her father-in-law, and was determined to keep her children innocent of the ways of the world. Caroline was clever enough to make the most of her education, and left her schoolroom with three languages under her belt, and the family's talent for music. In January 1765, Caroline was officially engaged to Crown Prince Christian of Denmark. Their betrothal was unique as Christian's mother was Frederick's youngest sister, making them the first coupled cousins. While they were perfectly suited in some ways, they were both Protestant and of similar social rank. On January 14, 1766, in the middle of preparations for the wedding, Christian's father had died and he had gone from Crown Prince to King Christian VII of Denmark. In October of that same year, the marriage was celebrated by proxy. Christian's place at the altar was taken by her own uncle and she didn't meet her groom in person for another few weeks. It's clear the marriage was doomed right from the start. On the 1st of May, 1767, Caroline had her coronation in Copenhagen, marking her official transition into her role as Queen Consort of Denmark and Norway. This was a pivotal moment in her life, as she embarked on her duties and responsibilities as queen. The marriage was unhappy just from the start. Christian, who was already showing signs of mental illness, was resentful that he had been forced to marry by his court. As a result, he refused to consummate the marriage for several months and instead took multiple mistresses. It was only when he was convinced of the necessity of producing an heir to the throne that he eventually consummated the marriage. Crown Prince Frederick was born in January 1768, and Christian returned his attention to other women. Caroline on the other hand now had a reason to fight for her place at court. She was disliked by her husband's courtiers and favourites. The Danish court was far stricter than the English one and her behaviour had scandalised the nobles. Like her brother George, Caroline was fond of walking and could be spotted strolling through the streets of Copenhagen rather than taking the carriage that was traditionally used by queens. Christian's favourites did not endear themselves to her. Her favourite lady-in-waiting was dismissed, and although she initially rejected the first replacement, she eventually had to accept the second choice. She was also rumoured to have had an affair with an actor in late 1768, but it's believed he was the lover of another of her ladies-in-waiting. Christian had embarked on a tour of Europe and had the actor exiled on his return. Additionally, several other ladies at court were suspected of having affairs, and they were accused of influencing the Queen's alleged immoral behaviour, further contributing to the tension and discord within the court. In reality it appears that Caroline's first and only affair was with the royal physician, Johann Struensee. Christian returned to Copenhagen in 1769 with Struensee in tow. Although Christian's mental health was getting worse, Struency was generally able to placate him and keep him relatively calm. Caroline initially disliked him. He encouraged the king to take a new mistress, but after this failed he turned to trying to improve the relationship between the king and queen. He also helped treat the queen when she suffered from dropsy and successfully inoculated the crown prince against smallpox. Caroline and Struency are believed to have been lovers from early 1770. Although some in the court believed the relationship started in late 1769, wherever the king and queen went, the royal doctor went with them. Working together Caroline and Struency were able to have the king's malicious favourites banished from court. 
In December 1770, Struensee was a privy councillor, and by the summer of 1771 he was given the same power as the king. In the following months Caroline's unpopularity increased as she supported her lover's attempts to reform the country. It wasn't helped by her behavior, she reportedly made little attempt to hide her adoration for Struensee. She also caused further scandal by riding horseback dressed in men's clothing, and had a portrait made of her dressed in the uniform of her regiment. Her mother-in-law, King Christian's stepmother, led the opposition party at court, while Caroline formed her own group of followers. On the 7th of July, 1771, Caroline gave birth to her second child, a baby girl named Louise Augusta. Louise Augusta was granted the titles of Princess of Norway and Denmark. However, the belief at court was that the baby should be called Louise Augusta Struensee. Despite the question of her paternity baby Louise would grow up close to her older brother Frederick, and was an accepted part of the Danish court. The baby's birth seems to have been the last straw for the Dowager Queen. Rumors circulated that Caroline and her lover wanted to remove Christian from power and rule the country themselves. After another courtier gave the Dowager Queen evidence, now believed to have been fraudulent, suggesting that the couple were plotting against the king she decided to act. In January 1772 Struensee and his supporters were arrested. The same night Caroline Matilda was captured with her daughter and removed to Kronborg Castle, where they were kept under close guard. This marked a dramatic and pivotal moment in Caroline Matilda's life and the political turmoil of Denmark during that time. On 6 April 1772 the marriage of Caroline Matilda and King Christian was dissolved. Both she and Struensee had admitted their affair after weeks of pressure. Struensee was executed on the 28th of April, while Caroline Matilda's brother King George III of Great Britain had already begun negotiations with the Danish court for his sister. It was agreed that Denmark would return her dowry and provide a pension, and she would be able to retain her title. On the 3rd of May she left Kronborg Castle, her final destination was Sell Castle in Hanover. Her children had to be left behind in Denmark and never saw her again. Caroline Matilda led a life of retirement in Cell. She was visited by friends and family, including her sister Augusta. She had a library and a small theatre, and regularly donated to charities relating to orphans and children from poor families. She died suddenly from scarlet fever on 10 May, 1775, at the age of 23. At the time of her death, she was involved in a plot to return her to Denmark to act as regent for her young son but her untimely death put a stop to it. She was buried near her great-grandmother, Sophia Dorothea, another woman exiled from her court and children. Her son became King Frederick VI of Denmark, getting his revenge on his grandmother by seizing power and demissing her ministers when he came of age. He was close to his sister, despite the questions about her paternity, and kept her as one of his most trusted advisors for the rest of his life.